all our praise that your heart would be open and that you will take this as a lifetime opportunity for a change. Nothing is too dead that cannot be restored. Nothing is too lost that cannot be recovered. I'd like you to stand on your feet in faith as we welcome the ministry of God's servant, Bishop John Ekong. He is a bishop with an apostolic mandate. And this night, God's grace will flow through him through your life. Come on, celebrate God as we welcome God's servant. To God be the glory, great things he has done, so loving the world that he gave us his son. Thank you for great things you have already done and many more you are going to do. Thank you for the gifts of a people who understands the mystery of entering into your presence with the heart touched, affected, impacted, to bring life-changing worship to you. And thank you for what you have done since the foundation of the world coming to manifest in the gathering of your people called the Restoration Grace Assembly. This indeed is the beautiful home where your presence is inhabiting and thank you for the people gifted anointed impacted to affect the end time move of God in a manner we have never seen before and thank you for your choice seven yes pastor and pastor Mrs. Caris Esinabong you have used to affect lives nations and world over. And thank you for what you are doing in Akwa Basibum State. Using him. Thank you for great men and women you have added to his life and ministry. Thank you for 2019 convention. And what you have designated from the foundation of the world. To accomplish in time and in season. And thank you for choosing here. To demonstrate and to dramatize your power in a manner reminiscent. And thank you for the revealed glory as never heard or seen before. And thank you for the emirate of glory uh, hovering over this place. And thank you for all vessels that are yielded and broken 
uh, to be used by you throughout the beginning and the opening of this convention till the sharing of the grace on Sunday. And thank you even for uh, the music, the worshiper that came all the way from Abuja to cause heaven to further be opened uh, with constant manifestation of the dignity and the infallibility of God's power in this sanctuary that will radiate into the world around us to bring to bear the harvest of glory in a manner. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you for the rain that showed that something new has just started beginning from the opening of this convention. And thank you because he has watered the land, watered the, the state, watered the nation. We are yet to witness a shift in a manner we have never seen before. Prosperity is already taking over the land and the life of the people. Thank you, great God. And thank you for choosing me by the foreordination of your greatness and glory to declare this convention open that will bring literally the manifestation of your power and your glory in a manner that everyone will talk about it and say, I have seen God face to face and the radiance of your glory shall affect every life as never known or seen before. Somebody shout glory to Jesus. Thank you, Father. I turn over this time unto you. And I trust that by the time you are done, it will leave an eternal mark on the lives of the mortal sons of men. Because everything the Lord does, it shall be forever. And it will leave a seal of eternity on the lives of people. Be exalted, O Lord. And I turn over this time unto you. And have your will, O Heavenly Father. And be gracious unto thy people in the gathering of the champions and the eagles of the end time, all to the glory of your own name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may take your seat. God bless you. I want to begin by thanking God sincerely for the privilege and opportunity to be part of this convention, especially on the opening day. Because the effect of what happens in the days ahead is measured by what happens on the opening day. And I want to thank God sincerely for the man and the woman of God who have heard from God and have allowed the spirit of the Lord to give undeniable conviction that allowed that I should be part of the opening move of God in this historic gathering of the sons of men. Thank you, man of God, Pastor Caris. And thank you, Mama. And thank you, wonderful, anointed, great men and women of God. And very particularly, uh, Minister Prosper, all the way from Abuja. You did a great work. And indeed, you have caused heaven to be open. And the choir, in their colors and in their beautiful appearance and presentation, had been very amazing. Uh, this is a beautiful home that God dwells. Everything, everything done here inhabits the presence of God. Indeed, God is pleased to be here. And I'm glad I am part of his work. Somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, the Bible says in Isaiah 55 and verse 10 and 11, Say, for as the rain cometh down and snow from heaven, and do not return back there again, but waters the earth, that it might spring forth and bud, that it might bring seed to the sower and fruit to the eater, so shall my word be, that goes forth out of my mouth and can never return unto me void, but shall accomplish the purpose and pleased. And shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send the word. Honestly, the art poor some hours ago before I got in here showed that God is committed to bring the art poor of his word like rain in order to water the lives of the sons of men and make them ready to bring forth fruit. You are bad to be fruitful to the amazement of your generation. Somebody shout glory to Jesus. 
it is very significant that it never showed sign that rain was coming. Suddenly and inadvertently, it came and those who are very prophetic understood that God is sowing a seed of harvest somewhere. And me who was appointed to declare this convention open, I had a stronger apostolic and prophetic understanding that it is the remnant that is coming to water the dry lives of the sons of men and cause a sprouting in a way you have never experienced before. What is about to take over your life and this assembly will be very phenomenal. The world had never heard. The world had never seen. A new move of God is about to be launched from this altar. As a matter of fact, the Lord says before the convention is over, a visitation that will be very strange and spectacular shall inundate this place. He said, I'm going to have the lives of the sons of men in this assembly as if rapture had come. But it will be the harvest of glory and power. I will dignify the life of people. I am pleased with the work you do. And I needed an apostolic grace to come and declare the mandate in order to launch my hand into the life of the sons of men in order to bring them to the place of prominence and dignity in a manner the world will be mesmerized about their manifestation. And this is what the Lord has commissioned me to do. I came with a loaded prophetic mandate mingled with the, with the apostolic grace to declare the counsel of the Lord having understood that God would do nothing except be revealed to himself and the prophet. And when the prophet has a true understanding of the revelation, that is when it will bring a revolution to the people of God. You are about to witness an eruption that will bring you to a new crescendo in God's move. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to Jesus. Especially when I have been privileged to know the theme of this convention that had already been used as, as the theme of your television program is used for the very first time for a convention. Alive again. Alive again. Somebody shout, I am alive again. And as I brood over the theme, the word alive again, it sounds like a familiar word. But if you take it for granted that it sounds like a familiar word, you will miss a historic revelation that will take you into a journey of dignity and greatness. So I had to brood over the word alive again. And then the Lord began to download from the very throne room of grace the content and the meaning of the word alive again. Remember, you will not talk about again if something was not once upon a time alive and then lost the life and then by supernatural visitation, that life is coming back better, greater and more dignified. Your life is coming back again and the world around you will wonder whether it is the same you that they knew that is manifesting now. Somebody shout hallelujah. Alive again is an exalted declaration giving victory over death and damnation through the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. In Revelation chapter 1 and verse 18, Jesus said, I am he that liveth and was dead. You don't talk about alive again if something that lived didn't die. Even Jesus himself showed the value of death for the reason of multiplicity. He said, until a corn of wheat is cast to the crown and died, it abides alone. But if it dies, it is an opportunity to sprout up and bring forth much fruit. So God is coming in this convention with the theme alive again, with the spirit of multiplicity, the spirit that will bring you from uh, the obscurity of life to the place of prosperity with dignity of value and dignity of purpose to the extent that people will see you as they saw Jesus and then they could not understand him. Have you ever wondered how 
he died and was buried three days only. He resurrected and people who knew him didn't know him again. Only three days. People who knew him didn't know him again. Mary walked up to him, a woman that loved him so much. She walked up to him and said, I suppose you are a gardener. It shows there is something that comes back with you when you are alive again. But the truth is that he that came back to life knew Mary, but Mary didn't know him. He called her Mary. And that voice alone resonated inside of her and opened her eyes of understanding. And she knew him and said, Rabboni, meaning Lord, Messiah. And then she jumped on him and said, hold on. I have a revelation to make to my father. Because my father would be pleased to see that I am alive again. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody somewhere will be happy to see you coming back better and rebranded. Somebody somewhere, you are about to be showcased and presented to your generation alive again. Of course, it is true that, that Dorcas died. And because of the value she contributed to life in her first living, they refused to bury her. And wish that something supernatural would happen. But they did not understand how. But suddenly an information got to them. That a man who carries the glory, Peter, is somewhere nearby. They said we would not bury her until that man of God comes. Every time a true man of God arrives, life will be resurrected again. Life will be brought back again. And if I am truly a messenger of heaven, whatever dies in your life shall come back again. Area capacity, Maxiel Katomina, Great Jehovah. Yes, you resurrected and came with the power and the dominance of resurrection. And that will be replayed again in the restoration assembly, beginning from this opening service. Somebody shout hallelujah. And Peter came. And then they took Peter to where the cops, the remain of Dorcas, was. And he walked up and down and fell upon the remains of Dorcas. And the unction for resurrection came. Once upon a time, I heard a priest I talk about Jesus raising dead. He said, Jesus did not resurrect Lazarus. He resuscitated Lazarus. I said, that is wrong. The Bible shows Jesus take the first order of resurrection. Thereafter, we follow. Resuscitation means you were at the state of coma. You were not completely dead. And someone brings you back to life. That is resuscitation. But resurrection is when you were completely dead, ready to be buried like Lazarus, and then the power of resurrection is demonstrated on you. And you came back to life. There is no sin in God re resurrecting. Someone in his own order. Of course, the Bible says, I have said, ye are gods. And the scriptures are not broken. Meaning we can do what he did. We can witness what he witnessed. And we can stand in the same grace. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> and Peter, warming up the cups of Adokas, called her Tabitha. I say unto you, arise. And the Bible says, and she that was dead came back to life. And Peter presented her alive. Peter did what? Presented her alive. Everything that dies in your life by the restoration grace in this assembly, you will be brought back to life and you will be presented Alive, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. So Jesus said in that Revelation 1:18, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, somebody say, and behold. What makes the devil happy 
is when he hears that you are dead. What most people said, I know he will not survive, is when they hear you are dead. But they lack the vision to be whole. You know that the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Sanhedrin, they were celebrating the death of Jesus Christ. They were happy that he was dead. They were popping champagnes. Even the devil said, I have brought him down. But even failed to read First Peter 3 that says, while he was in the grave, he was alive and went to preach to those who are in prison, who had died in their sins in the days of Noah. They were celebrating the tomb of Jesus. That the man is inside. They had no idea the man had had a crusade in the realm of the spirit. Because there was a generation that died who did not have a first hand encounter with Jesus. So he thanked who killed him. Because until the flesh is put to death, the spirit shall not be quickened. And went and preached salvation, redemption to the rebellious generation of Noah. And here, the Bible says, Behold, I am alive forevermore. Did you see that in your Bible? And behold, I am alive forevermore. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. And having the keys of hell and death. So alive again means Hell and death had been conquered. Oh, you didn't hear me. Alive again means the forces of darkness is no longer in charge. Alive again means you have no reason to be a candidate of hell. Because the keys of hell and death had been given to him when he resurrected. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Alive again means all that you have lost to the forces of darkness can be restored, can be brought back. You can access a better and a renewed life again. Oh, somebody shout glory to Jesus. So alive again in my research is the resurrection of Jesus Christ as it pertains to every believer that whatever is born of God who takes after the image and the likeness of Christ will be brought back to life and so, as this convention will be declared open with such strong revelations and power, everything the enemy thought was stolen out of your life and destiny, was stolen out of your family, and everything you live for shall be brought back to life again. Somebody shout hallelujah. For in Gospel John 6, verse 63, the Bible says, It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh profit nothing. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So as I am speaking the word under the unction of the resurrection power, people's lives are being stirred up. Anything that dies in you, the word of God is bringing back life. Somebody shout hallelujah. <clears throat> Dead marriage is coming back alive. Dead business is coming back alive. And whatsoever the doctor saw in your system and frowned his head on, 
go back to him 24 hours from now. He will be amazed and dazed by what God is done. Because restoration power is the power to do the impossible. For I am the God of all flesh. There is absolutely nothing too hard for me to do. Somebody shout hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 15. Let's go. First Corinthians chapter 15. Let's take the reading from verse 20. We will do all of that through to 26 of First Corinthians chapter 15. Did you hear that word that goes to affirm what I told you earlier on? That if Christ resurrected as a first fruit, anyone that came back to life in that order is the grace of resurrection that has made that possible. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Underline the word now. But now is Christ risen from the day. Hold on there. I want everybody to look at the word now. But now Christ is risen from the dead. What does that strong word now inform? It shows that the power of resurrection is as current now as it was then. Yes, sir. Did you see it with me that way? But now. It doesn't say but then. As for us to refer to the resurrection of Jesus 2,000 years ago. But refer to it now. Now. Somebody say now. Now. The power of resurrection is still effectuating now. And it will work to bring back life on the sons and daughters of Zion. Right now. Somebody say right now. Right now. Because Christ is risen from the dead now. And therefore now. That power is activated in this convention. Amen. That power of restoration. Amen. That power of restoration. Amen. That power of manifestation. Amen. That power of dominion. Amen. It came with the restoration of Jesus. Amen. Whatsoever dies in your life by the mandate of restoration, it is coming back alive. Amen. Somebody said it is coming back alive. It is coming back alive. <laughs> Go on, sir. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Did you hear that? Oh my God, somebody lift up your right hand and say this is the day. That I'm going to be made alive. Amen. He said, but now Christ is risen from the dead. Even as a first fruit of them that slept. First fruit. It takes the first order. It takes the first order. It's the first fruit. And of course you can see that word first fruit is written in plural. To show that he is not the last fruit. Somebody lift up your hand and say, Lord, I'm about to take my turn. Everything in my life is coming back to life. It's coming back to life. Everything that dies, everything that dies, is coming back to life. It's coming back to life. From the crown of my head, the crown of my head, to the sole of my feet. The sole of my feet. Yes, you have taken the order of resurrection. You have taken the order of resurrection. This is my turn. This is my turn. This is my season. This is my season. This is my hour. This is my hour. I am alive again. I'm alive again. The power that raises us from the dead is dwelling in me. Is dwelling. Is dwelling. In me, it's, in it's me. bringing me back to life. It's bringing me back to life. I know the doctor said my womb is dead, but Jesus came back to life. I am coming back to life. I know the doctor said.
said, I can never conceive. And now, the resurrection of Jesus is bringing back life. The enemy had attempted to kill my life, to kill my marriage, to kill the anointing. But by the power of resurrection, I am alive again. I'm coming back alive again. 2019 shall be my year of manifestation. I shall manifest the glory of God as never heard, as never seen. Because when Jesus resurrected, he manifested the glory of God. He came with immortality. I am manifesting the power of resurrection. What I could not do in 2018, there is grace to accomplish that in 2019. Whatever dies and the enemy had buried, as the Lord brought back Lazarus, my life is coming back. My destiny is coming back. My soul is coming back. There is resurrection of the gift of grace. There is resurrection of the gift of power. There is resurrection of the anointing. I will begin to operate in the supernatural as never before. As never before. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Somebody shout a resounding life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go on, sir. 23. But every man in his own order. Did you hear that? Every man in his own order. Order what? Resurrection. Because Jesus took the first turn. Can I tell you something? Nobody will take your order. Amen. Lift up your right hand before the Lord. And say, Lord, Lord, in 2019, in 2019, if indeed you have resurrected, if indeed you have resurrected, in your own order, in your own order, I'm about to take my order. I'm about to take my I'm order. I'm about to take my 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 order. And that brings me to 2 Samuel 23 and verse 5. Put it on the screen for me. And latch it for me to see from here. Although my house be not so with God, yet, somebody say yet, yes. he had made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in how many things? All things. In all things, and sure, for this is all my salvation, and this is all my desire. Is that your desire? Yes, sir. God has given order in all things. And that order comes with assurance. That as Jesus resurrected in his own order, you are taking your order this Amen. night. Amen. You are taking your order this night. Amen. And the Lord has mandated me to give an order. That anything that dies in your life must come back alive. Amen. The Lord has given me order that any young woman or young man that the family said you can never marry, your marriage is coming back to life again. Amen. I have been given an order concerning Restoration Grace Assembly that within this convention, something historic, something phenomenal, something supernatural, something strange, something that the eyes of human never saw. <laughs> there is an order for the manifestation of the inexplainable grace of God as never heard before. Amen. All that in all things. And sure, if I'm not sure of the order, I would not have given. Right now, I have extended order to the pit of hell. Anyone's destiny that had been stifled here, by the order of heaven, let it be released now. Amen. If you read that verse to the end, you will see a statement there. And in fact, read it to the end, that verse 5. See the last statement? Ordered in all things, for this is all my salvation, and this is all my desire, although he 
make it not yet to grow. That is where people feel frustrated. Although it make it yet not to grow. What that simply means is that the order had already been given. And the manifestation is just yet to take place. And so if you don't see it in the next 24 hours, doesn't mean the order had not been honored. If you don't see an exponential growth, doesn't mean the Lord has not honored the order. It is just a matter of time. Then you will take your turn. Amen. Yes. Whatever you expected to grow in 2018 that did not grow, by the order of 2019, the growth shall take effect in the name. Amen. You expected to be a millionaire in 2018, and it didn't happen yet. And you felt frustrated that maybe God did not give order. God had given order. Yes, it was meant to be carried out in 2019. And that order must be carried out now. Amen. Anyone that contributed to the building of this edifice in the name of the Lord, an order is given for you to be a billionaire in 2019. Amen. Ordered in all things. So, which is all my salvation, which is all my desire. Everyone in life desires to make it. But there must be order to effectuate that. Glory. Lift up your right hand before the Lord and tell him, Lord, Lord give order concerning me. Give order concerning me. Give order concerning my house. Give order concerning my house. Give order concerning my children. Give order concerning my children. Give order concerning the church. Give order concerning the church. Give order concerning Aquaibom State. Give order concerning Aquaibom Give order concerning Nigeria. Give order concerning Nigeria. You are the one who specializes in giving order. You are the one who specializes in giving order. Give order. Give order. In all things. In all things. Listen to me. That simply means nothing happens by chance. All that will take place in your life in 2019 is not a coincidence. Did you hear that? It would never be a coincidence. It will be honoring the order of divinity to cause the sons of men to function in their capacity. Hallelujah. For it is the spirit that gives life. The flesh profit nothing. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. It has capacity to bring back life. It has capacity to cause a seed to sprout inside of you. Any deposit of grace in someone's life here that you have never tapped into it all the days of your life by the order of the word of God it shall manifest in the name of Jesus Amen. let there be manifestation of the prophetic grace Amen. let there be manifestation of the apostolic grace Amen. let there be manifestation of the prophetic grace Amen. let there be manifestation of the healing grace Amen. let there be manifestation of the hearing grace Amen. for the Bible says in, in Proverbs 20 verse 12 the hearing ears and the seeing eyes both are made by God Glory. Glory. Let's go back to our text. Glory. Let me highlight in verse 22. For us in Adam all died. How many died in Adam? All. Even so. Someone say even so. Even so. In Christ shall all be made alive. Does that word all be made alive includes you? Yes, sir. Except you did not die in Adam. Except nothing dies in you as a result of the sin of Adam. But if anything died and you look disadvantaged in Christ Jesus tonight, all shall be made alive. Amen. 
all shall be made alive. Amen. It means it is not the end of your life to have been a victim of what Adam did. It means it is not the end of your life to have been a victim of what your forefathers did. It means it is not the end of your life to have been cheated and denied your right by men. Because in Christ Jesus, there is no exemption in the grace of redemption. Oh, you didn't hear that. I hear you, sir. For in Christ Jesus, all, black or white, oriental or the Caribbeans, in Christ Jesus, short or tall, in Christ Jesus, educated or illiterate, all shall be made alive. Yes, Anyone under the sound of the voice of the Lord tonight, if Christ Jesus had died according to the scripture and had resurrected according to the scripture, then you are taking your order. Amen. Anything that dies in you be alive. Amen. Anything that dies in you be alive. Amen. Anything that dies in you be alive. Amen. A woman with a growth in the womb, the Lord said, I am operating that growth now. Amen. There is an activation of grace in this service tonight. Yes, Lord. Oh, you didn't hear me. Yes, Lord. You didn't hear me. In Matthew chapter 3 and verse 16, the Bible says, And when Jesus was baptized, and straightway, someone says straightway. Straightway. He came out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto who? Him. And he saw. Somebody say, and he saw. And he saw. Somebody's about to see something you never saw before. Amen. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighted upon him. The next verse says, and lo, a voice came. Every time the voice of the Lord is uttered with inspiration, it resonates in the realm of the spirit to cause a stirring for a manifestation. And lo, a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. All of that came because there was an open heaven. All of that came because there was a baptism. I came here and wallowed in the baptism of worship. Then I knew heaven is open. Yes, Lord. You cannot have a foretaste of the ecstasy of heaven and then you don't hear the voice of God. And anyone that hears the voice of God can never be the same again. For the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. By the stirring of the voice of the Lord tonight. Yes, your life is coming back alive. Amen. Your marriage is coming back alive. Amen. Your business is coming back alive. Amen. The church is coming back alive. Amen. The gift of grace is deposited inside of you that you had no idea. I command it to be quickened alive. Amen. Somebody shout, I am alive, I am alive. I'm alive, I'm alive. The creative voice of God commands the audacity of heaven to cause things to happen. In Psalm 147, verse 15, the Bible says, God had given a command upon the earth, and his word runs very swiftly. The speed of the word of God is faster than the fastest jet on the face of earth. In order to bring to bear in your life, 
what the Lord has commanded. The Lord has given a command upon the earth. And his word runs very swiftly. That is the speed of the miraculous that will take place in this convention. Amen. As I declare the convention open, I have ordered the intrinsic manifestation of the word of God in a historic manner as never heard or seen before. Amen. And whatever the Lord declares, it shall be made manifest in someone's life. Amen. And he has commanded me to make a declaration that everyone whose life and destiny had died, let there be a resurrection now. Amen. Whatsoever you have lost to the forces of darkness, I, 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 I mock the devil myself into account in the Bible. One, they kill in Gospel Luke chapter 8, the son of a widow. She was already a widow, meaning she lost her husband. And she consoled herself with the only son she had. And the enemy who had no compunction for anybody came and took that boy. He came and killed that boy. And the widow cried profusely that everything I was living for is gone. And they brought an open casket and put the boy. And they were on their way singing a, a solemn song to the burial. And the Lord confronted the, the movement. The Bible says as they were going about to take exit from the gate, the Lord appeared because the Lord controlled the gate of all destiny. Yes, sir. The Lord appeared at the gate. And the people who carried the corpse of the only widow's son stood still. Because no movement when the Lord is at work. Yes, sir. And the Lord commanded those who bear the casket to let it down. And he looked at the dying destiny in a casket. He looked at a young man who had never married nor built a house. About to be buried and forgotten. He looked at a great destiny that Christ came to die for. About to be buried with no future. And then he had compassion on the mother who was about to bury the only hope. There are some of you here in this assembly who are holding to the only hope. And the enemy had been shaking your hand in past to take away that only hope. The Lord is at the door of your destiny tonight. Amen. Master Take. Yes. The Lord does not arrive late. He, allow, he arrives on time. And he commanded the young man in a casket. Young man, I say unto you, arise. And the young man that was dead, at uh, the resonation of the voice of the Lord, came back to life. And it was like the mother was awake to see that something had changed. And somebody tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., will be awake to see that the Lord has changed the order of your life. Amen. And he presented the young man back to the mother alive. In another occasion, the popes buried a young man who was not popular in his days, in Gospel John chapter 11. In fact, the sister was more popular than the young man. The name is city after the sister. If they tell you, come to meet me in Bethany, people say, which Bethany? They say, Bethany of Mary. But Lazarus never had identity. And they killed him with no footprint on the soil of life. A 
and they buried him. One thing I, have to, I want you to understand is that those who buried Lazarus were not there when he resurrected. Yes, sir. Oh, you didn't hear me. Those who buried Lazarus were not there when he resurrected because they buried and left. Mary, Martha had already gone to meet with Jesus and said, Master, if you were around, my brother would not have died. For you to get corrected again, that Jesus can raise anybody, and not by resuscitation, but by resurrection. What did Jesus say? He said, I am the resurrection, the resurrection and the life. And the life. He didn't say, I am the resuscitation and the life. If you believe in me, though your brother is dead, yes, sir. it shall be what again? It shall be alive again. again. Mata said, Lord, I believe that he will resurrect in the last day, postponing the miracle of today to the end of time. Jesus said, that is not what I'm saying. I mean, I didn't say I will be the resurrection and the life. I said, I am the resurrection and the life. So the I am is in this house today. Amen. The resurrection and the life is in this house today. Amen. No wonder it started with the word. Now Christ had risen. Then he advanced to the graveyard. Because as I'm ministering now under his unction, we are close to where it spins your life. He said, take me to where you have led him. You must direct the word of God to where the troubling storm is in your life. And they took Jesus to the graveyard of Lazarus and said, roll back the stone. And they said, no, Lord, by this time he had stinged because he'd been in this grave for four days now. Jesus said, you have missed the order. I said, I am the resurrection and the life. When I am around, nothing decomposes. When I am around, nothing decays. Take me to where you have led him. He said, he must have stink. Nothing stings in the presence of the Lord. It stings based on how you think. Resurrection thinkers don't know impossibility. And they took him to the graveyard reluctantly. Jesus said, roll back the stone. You have a part to play in what will take place in your life in this convention. The stone could be your fear. The stone could be your doubt. The stone could be your unbelief. The stone could be the unforgiveness. The stone could be sin that stands as a debaran between you and your miraculous. You need to rule it back. And they roll back the stone. As soon as they roll back the stone, Jesus didn't look at Lazarus in the grave, if you read the scripture very well. He looked up. Because you must see the resurrector before you see the corpse. <laughs> My faith looks up today. But I says, when the stone was rolled, Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you because you have heard me always. And I know you are going to hear me again yes, sir. in the Restoration Grace Assembly that all men know that you have sent me and the Bible says, when he had thus spoken, because word activates action, word activates miracle, word activates testimony, word activates resurrection, word activates power, word activates anointing. When he had thus spoken, he cried again, underline the word again, because that's not the first time he cried and things happened. He cried again with a loud voice and said, Lazarus. I say unto you, come forth. He 
if he did not personalize the one he wanted to resurrect, everybody would have come out of the grave. Because of the yes, capacity sir. of the voice yes, of God. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every voice of God carries somebody's name tag on it. Yes, sir. Lazarus, you are the reason why I am here. I say unto you, come forth. And the Bible says, he that was dead, not he that is dead. Because once the Lord speaks, you are, you are, your situation has gone into past tense. Whatever trouble you in the morning before the service, that thing has faded into oblivion, has faded into the past yes, by Lord. the voice of the Lord. Yes, Lord. He that was sick, he that had hymia, he that had diabetes, he that had everything that troubled your life has faded into past tense. Yes, Lord. He that was dead stood up. Meaning life has come back. Stood up. Stood up. For Gospel John chapter 5, verse 24 and 25 said, The hour has come when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Man. And he that died shall do what? Come back alive. When the dead, when the dead, it shows. That death is not the final. So whatever dies, the ear is alive to hear. Yes. So Lazarus stood up alive in the grave. Bound with grave clothes. You know, a man's identity is in the face. They had wrapped their face with a, with, with a napkin. Meaning your identity is wiped away from the living. And you are buried with no identity. They covered the face and put him in the grave. And buried him bound with grave clothes. And the Lord looked at a young handsome man in the person of Lazarus standing with no identity. He, he brought another word. Because it is the word of God that activates. It is the word of God that changes situation. The Bible says, Isles are waiting for you, Allah. The forces of darkness, the Isu of Patmos, are waiting for my command to let you go. The Lord brought another word and said, Loose him and let, let him, him go. go. And inadvertently, they began to unwrap the young man and his identity came back. All the veil of covering cast in this assembly. I command you to be loose in the name of Jesus. Amen. People whose identity had been stolen by the ancestral manipulation. I lose you. Rekapa. Deteta. Grosia maye. Jehovah. Lora metekiloi. Sakra sakra. Pareki masoto toto. Lose them and let them go. And then they lose Lazarus to go. Ask me a question. Go to where? Jesus didn't say lose him. He said lose him and let him go. Because everyone has a mission if they are free. Everyone has a place of destiny and impact when they are free. Lose him and let him go and marry. Lose him, let him go and build a house. Lose him. As you are coming alive again, I command you to be loose. Amen. Young women, go and marry. I lose you from the cobwebs, go and marry. I lose you from the spell, go and prosper. Go and build a house. In, 20, in 2020, 
you will attend the convention as a landlord. For so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth and can never return to me void, but shall accomplish the purpose and please and shall prosper me in the thing whereof I said the word. Lose them, let them go. There are two young men here and a woman. Each time the door of destiny knocks on you, you will have a strange dream. Either masquerade will beat you to hell, or you will see yourself locked in a native mud house in the dream, looking for exit with no possibility of finding. And whatever promise you had in the real life, when you wake up with this nightmare, you know that it will happen as usual. The, the opportunity and the chances will be mad. And you have gone through this for, for years. And that has made those who were never meant to be equal with you. Yes, to leave you behind. And the Lord said, that veil of covering cast is broken over your life. <laughs> Two young men and a woman. A young woman. You, that had been your experience. The unbeatable voice of the Lord. The unnocosable voice of the Lord said, lose him and let him go. 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 As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, as Jesus was supposedly in the grave, but went to preach to the children of rebellion in the days of Noah, even so, as I'm standing here, Yes, I have gone to your village to deliver a message of redemption, a message of a life again. Wherever you were locked, wherever you were caged, Jesus gave, listen to me, Jesus gave another command at Gospel Mark chapter 11. He sent two of his disciples together and said, go to the village over against you. You will see a gold tie. A gold is a baby cow. And when you are a prominent person, you are tied in the whisker coven as a cow. And when you are just a small person, you are tied as a goat. He said, go to the village over again to you shake a cold tie. Lose it and bring to me. And if anybody challenge you and say, why do you do it? Tell them the Lord has need. The Lord has need of a young man here. The Lord has need of a young woman here. The Lord has need of one other person here. I am in your village now. Giving an order. Lose them and let them go. Lose them. Lose. 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 If I am a messenger of God and I carry the grace of God. Tonight, the Lord said, 10 people will see them standing before the contentious forces of their family, releasing them to go. The Lord said, you were a successful business person. And one day you dream, and you saw yourself doing the business you are doing in the real life in the dream. And somebody collected money from your hand. And since then, the business began to to die gradually and gradually and gradually. And now it is very difficult for you to survive with that business. It's coming back to life. Amen. Coming back to life. They collected money from you in the dream since then. The Lord said there are three persons here. One a woman. You see yourself in the dream being beaten and masquerade. You see yourself locked in in a mud house and you look for a way to get out. You don't know how. You will, will be cropping looking for the exit. You don't. I wanted to leave it. The Lord said bring them out and lose them. 
Where are those people? Two per three persons. Woman and, and, a, and two men. Lose them and let them go. Lose them and let them go. Stand here. Lift up your hand, all of you. Lose them and let them go. Lose them. And Jesus spoke with a loud voice. Never you mock a preacher who sweats because she is amplifying the voice of the Lord. Jesus spoke with a loud voice. And said, Lazarus, wreck her. I say unto you, come forth. And he that was dead bound came back to life. Woman, thou art loose. Loose and let her go free. Wreck her, ba, 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 ba. I release the auction. Oh, come webs over this man. I break the joke. I lose you instantly. In the name of Jesus, lose him and let him go. Lose her and let her go free. Lose her. Lose him and let him go. Lose him. Lose. Lose them. Lose him. Lose him. Lose. 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 You have seen opportunity and you have missed opportunity, says the Lord. But the joke is broken today. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Lose him, lose him. Let him go, let him go. He was supposed to be a star and a shining star for that matter. He had been fighting the spell of the ancestors for all these years. But the joke is broken today. Oh, glory. Lose him, lose him and let him go. Lose her, lose her. Lose him, lose him, lose Loose, loose him, loose him, loose him, loose him. The stigma of a family cause is being removed from you today. It's being removed from you today. You are free, says the Lord. Loose him. You are loosed. Loose her. Loose her. Let her go free. Let her go free. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. I loose you this day from the joke, from the veil. In the name of Jesus. Everybody lift up your two hands. 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 Uh, permit me in the remaining three minutes left on my time to complete that scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. To Verse 23. But every man in his own order. Christ, every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits. Yes. Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Afterwards, they that are who? Christ. Christ. Are you redeemed of the Lord? Yes. Are you of the Christ? Have you benefited from the resurrection blood of Jesus? Then you are taking your order now. Amen. Then you are taking your order now. Amen. Because he's coming in here for your sake. Amen. Take your order right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Go on. Then come at the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all the rules. Then come at the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority, every rule, every authority over your life, I command them to be put down in the name of Jesus. Take it down to verse 26. Okay. 20. Is that the... Uh, 20, 25. 25. For he must reign. For he must do what? For Ten. he must do what? Reign. Now you can't reign until forces and powers are put down. Now, if that has taken place, it is your time to reign. Amen. For he must reign till he had put how many enemies? All enemies. Where? Under his feet. I command all contentious spirit against your destiny to come under your feet right now. All territorial powers contending the destiny of the sons of men. I command you to come down now. Heria Come down now. Verse 26. 
26. And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is what? Dead. dead. Why? Because if dead is not conquered, you cannot be alive again. I am he that liveth and was dead. If he did not conquer dead, he would not be alive again. So the last enemy is what the Lord deals with in this opening convention. Whoever has survived 2018 and remain your enemy, this is the last moment in your life. But by the power of resurrection, he had victory over death. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? So the last enemy was conquered at Calvary, giving me the mandate to conquer it in your life and family. So the enemy that you were worried about has just been brought down for your sake in the name of Jesus. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angel prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him king of kings and lord of lords because he's alive again. The, the enemy of death is conquered. The enemy of humiliation is conquered. The enemy of frustration is conquered. The enemy of poverty is conquered. Your last enemy has just been brought down. Somebody shout glory seven times. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate for bring forth given to me on this opening convention of a life again with the authority given to me by the man servant and the woman servant on this altar I make a declaration that all the enemies you've been contending with in your life all these years the Bible had declared them the last enemy you will ever see and as a convention is declared open, every access and a doorway through which the enemy has come into your life to trouble your life, I declare them closed forever in the name. And the ancestral death, family death, yoke, working, contending against your life has just been brought to the solution forever. They don't have power. To rule over your life again. By the order of heaven. You are free. To take delivery of your destiny. And to reign. And occupy. Until returns. And heaven that is declared open. At the opening of this convention. Shall remain open. With ecstasy of glory. With demonstration of power. Signs and wonders. Glory shall be revealed. The power of God shall be reminiscent. The anointing shall be strong on this altar. 
and no power of darkness will have dominion over you, over this land, over this assembly. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lift up your voice loud enough and shout, Seven, I am alive again. What do we one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the last one. Seven and the last one. Seven and the last one. Seven and the last one.